Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis, and it's time for another No Capes, where I talk about books that don't have to do with superheroes and or Ethan doesn't read them and doesn't review them with me. This week, this time, not week, this time it's going to be all about the ladies. Each of these books has to do with um, ladies in one way or another. Um, first, I'm going to talk about I Love Trouble number two, put out by Image. Um, I like this comic. It's it's different. It's a little interesting it, as far as the art style. I think um, uh, Da Costa DC Comics describes this art style best um, in it the fact that it's um, kind of graffiti like, um, you know, street tag kind of a thing uh, in, in the style. Uh, you can check her out there. There she is throwing up a bunch of. In this case, on this cover, she is throwing up a bunch of washed um, checks from FEMA. Um, she lives in New Orleans, and you know, I'm assuming after um, Katrina, she probably collected a bunch of them, so she cashed out a bunch of those and lives off of those for a while. Uh, this comic, probably of the 30-some pages that are in it, there's probably only maybe 10 pages that actually has... Um, dialogue on it. Uh, the rest of it is mostly um, sequential art showing you where she's been, what she's done, some more of her past, and, and where she's at um, currently. Um, Storyline continues along in this. Um, she is approached by the people who have been watching her. Uh, the people that have been watching her aren't supposedly a government agency or anything like that. There's some private organization that would like them to work for her. Um, she settles her gangster problems potentially in this issue. Um, if you remember last time I reviewed this, I complained about the gutters because the gutters were so huge. Um, that seems to have been have changed in this book. Um, they probably watched my video, listened to me, and so they changed the comic. I'm sure that's what it is, right? Um, the entire pictures are bigger. It's like instead of instead of the whole page being put, you know, being uh, of art being put on a page and the gutters being these massive things all the way around it. You know, now the gutters are more of a normal size kind of thing, and all the art is bigger and whatnot. Um, anyway, she's approached by um, these people that have been following her to have her work for them, as opposed to the trouble she's got herself into so far. Who knows if she's going to take that on, Priscilla is going to take that on or not. Um, I continue to love her art collection in here. Um, the guy that, that introduces himself to her actually introduces himself to her at her home admiring her wonderful page of uh, her wall of art that I had showed last time that had the Clements and, you know, the original Thor page and all these other different artists and whatnot. And, and, and he's talking about the art that she has on the wall and he's like, oh yeah, by the way, you know, that, that, the ones that are hanging up, you know, that one that was hanging up that y y you were going to take um, and you didn't, it's, you know, actually in, and she finishes a sentence that it's in a vault in the basement that she knows. So she knows where the originals are. She's not stealing the fakes that are hung on the wall. She's actually taking the originals is what she's taking. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, I don't know if this is a knock your sock off comic, um, but it's it's a fun read. Um, it, it's a quick read, like I said, because there aren't, uh, in this issue, there weren't a lot of um, words. There's not a lot of dialogue. There's not a lot written, not a lot of written text. It, it, you just follow along, and it's pretty obvious to get a sense of, where she's at and, and the stuff that she's had to deal with and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hang around for at least two or three more issues to see exactly where this other group of people is going at and whatnot. Um, like I said, it doesn't knock my socks off, but it's kind of fun. Um, I bet you it'd be really cool uh, if you're not picking this up in singles, which would be cool if you do that. It might be cool in a trade, too, other than you're going to miss some of the fun covers and colors. Um, just because you get all that art all at once and whatnot, which is kind of cool, but I kind of like it. Kind of like it. It's pretty cool. Next, I'm going to talk about Ghost Number Three. Um, great, kind of creepy, ghosty, Halloweeny-looking cover. Of course, this triangle will show up in the um, actual comic. Um, I'm really liking this book. Every issue, story-wise, is more interesting than the issue before. Every issue, dialogue-wise, is cooler and funner than the last issue. Um, 
I'm not gonna get tons into the story. It's still early on. And I want to spoil things for people, you know, too much. Um, it is um, our main character here. She gets a better understanding of who she is and where she came from. Um, not because she remembers it, but just because she they get on the internet and explore who she is um, more. We do see some of her real past in um, in this, which is really interesting. Um, we get to discover um, the crazy scientist woman more and her past and how that all ties together to the devil slash governor type person. All that gets tied together and gives us a sense of why what's happening is happening. Now, going forward, next issue, um, I'm assuming we're going to get to see now what's going to happen now that we have all that information. Um, at one point, this was supposed to only be four issues, and then I heard it was an ongoing. I don't know, I don't know 100% if that's the case or if issue number four really is going to be the final issue. Um, I guess I'll have to jump on Twitter and and um, bug Kelly Sue and see if she'll tell me Kelly Sue, the writer, if she'll tell me which which it's going to be because I don't know at this point. If it's going to go on, I'm going to keep reading it. My only beef with it is the art. Now I love Phil Noto's art. As far as pictures, he he does beautiful pictures, um, and and I I love his characterizations of people and whatnot. My problem is 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 his sequential art. It it never feels like it has movement. It always feels static. It feels in place. Um, I mean, I know obviously everything we read in, in each panel is a snapshot of whatever's happening at the time. But you guys know that read comics, that um, you, know, you read them and it feels like there's movement across the panels. It feels like things are moving. Um, generally for me with Phil Noto, it, it doesn't. It's, it's very static. It's very, each picture is pretty, but it doesn't feel like it has the same sort of, uh, of, of movement and flow. Um, so it feels more like I'm reading a picture book then I'm reading sequential art. That's my only beef with it. I don't hate it. It just I wish it had more life as far as as far as movement and feeling like it it was moving. Um, don't know if I'm explaining that really well, but um, certainly enjoy it. Looking forward to number four. You know, if it's the last issue or not, I'm not sure. Um, if it is the last issue or last issue of this arc, I'm really curious to see how they kind of tie things up um, with what they've exposed in in this. Um, in this book. It, it's pretty cool, kind of sinister and creepy. And finally, talking of sinister and creepy, we're going to talk um, Fatal. This is number 11. This is the first of um, the single issue stories that um, Ed Brubaker decided that he was going to do. They decided this was going to be an ongoing that was going to give him the opportunity to kind of tell some stories of Josephine's past as opposed to showing these decades like we ha have been showing. Um, this probably is one of the best issues uh, of the series, in my opinion, the single story issue, you get to find out just what a train wreck Josephine can be. Um, she is, um, in this, she doesn't completely understand her power, or she understands she has the power, but she also thinks that she's crazy because of this, uh, this thing that happens with her or whatnot. But man, any guy that crosses this woman's path is pretty much screwed. I mean, you just you just are you you become obs instantly obsessed to the point of death and dismemberment, and um, th this kind of lays it out there even more um, and lays out some other really cool stuff. The writer that was in this issue in particular, he's kind of a cool guy. He suffers from uh, um, from Josephine, and he, and he has what a five ten minute conversation with her. Um, a really cool comic. Uh, I'm liking it more and more. If you remember my no capes in the past, I've always been kind of on the, you know, kind of hedging on this. Oh, there's not enough occult. I still think there's probably not as much as I was hoping there would be. But these little stories that are coming out right now, at least if any of them are, or those are like this one, I'm really going to enjoy it because um, I like these little vignettes with um, um, Josephine where we see just what kind of damage she's done to people at different times and and, and what kind of sense does that all make and, and whatnot. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, 
seen some covers for some upcoming ones where it looks like she's back in the West, which I'm curious to see how that story plays out versus this story, because in this story, um, she's exploring some stuff because she thinks that she's nuts, she's insane. Maybe it's not because of her power and what she can do as far as her power goes. Maybe it's the fact that she thought she was hearing voices and whatnot, and now she knows she really is, as opposed to just being crazy. Um, good stuff. Excellent all around. Um, art that works fabulously for the type of story that it is. Anyway, that's it for my All Lady Issue um, with Lady Issues. And I'll see you later on with some more No Capes.